Hey, what is going on, everybody? Jerma here with a gameplay commentary. I'm not going to be honest, I have absolutely no idea what's going to be in the background, and I have to apologize because my voice probably sounds like shit. And uh, it, it, there's a reason for that. I actually just got back from PAX. I slept an entire day. I haven't done that. Let me tell you, I have not slept an entire day, like a full, like, 16-hour period since I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Like, uh, th this, is, this has not happened in a long time. I was really tired. Uh, for good measure, I had a, a fantastic time at PAX. had a blast all four days in Seattle. And I want to tell you guys my thoughts on some things. First of all, this is going to be pretty casual. Uh, I I, my last video was a casual commentary as well. But as you can imagine, I've been away for almost a full work week. I've been almost gone for five days. So I haven't had a whole lot of time to uh, make any content or do any real videos. I had some things go up over the weekend. And I do apologize for that because I like to get like three, four, five videos uploaded every week. And I'm going to get back into it today. I actually have a lot of things planned, so stay tuned. And before I forget about it, while I was at PAX, I passed 150,000 subscribers. So, huge thank you, everybody. I, it seems like just yesterday, I was at 100,000 subscribers. And I just woke up one day, looked at the thing, and I was like, wow, we're at 150,000 subscribers right now. That's unbelievable. And it's happening faster. Things are... My, my channel's growing. And it, it's... It's crazy, guys. It really is. I, I can't thank you all enough for everything you do for this channel. Every day when I wake up and I look at uh, how many views or how many likes or how many, uh, how much my channel has grown, it's it's one of the most humbling experiences of my entire life is doing this YouTube thing. And it's one of the reasons why I like meeting you guys so much. Like the guys at PAX Prime, there was a couple dozen of you guys that ended up flagging me down. We did a little, couple little meetups. It's awesome to, to see you guys face to face and what you guys look like, how you guys act, what you guys think about games and where you're from and how you got there, how you're going home. Like, it's, I love that shit so much. So if you ever see me at an event or on the street and you, just, just come say hello, I, I, I will talk to you for as long as I can. And I, that means a lot to me. So we're going to move on from that, though, guys. Thank you all so much again for 150K. And we're going to talk about packs. We're going to talk about the things at packs that... I really liked and the things at PAX that I really didn't like and we'll start we'll do you know you want the good news or the bad news we'll start with the bad news first Mugenics was not playable Mugenics had a very very stuffed in the corner like pretend we're not here booth at PAX Prime and that was one of the most saddening things of the entire weekend for me because a lot of you guys know I was so excited for Mugenics I was so happy to see that they were going to bring it out there. Maybe they were going to show some stuff. It was going to be, like, playable. Oh, it was going to be cool. No. The only thing they really had there was T-shirts and Super Meat Boy on two or three computers in the back of their booth. That was really it. They showed a little teaser trailer, like a little cinematic from Eugenics, and they had a big cutout post thing where you could put your face in a cat's ass, and that's... That's funny and all, but I wanted to really play it. I wanted to talk to them about the development of the game. I wanted to really put myself in their shoes, and I really wanted to play the game, but I couldn't play it because I wasn't playable. You get the idea. For the good, I will say my top few things at PAX are definitely in the top three, at least. Wild Star. Wild Star looks like it's going to be fantastic. I didn't get a chance to play it because the problem with... MMOs at a big gaming event like a PAX or like an E3 or something like that It's really difficult to get on one of those machines because people get really invested They get sucked in but they want to play more they want to get more into it And they don't leave the machine for like 20 or 30 minutes when there's people behind them wanting to play So what I here's my advice what I suggest to any developers or any anybody it doesn't matter if it's an MMO or an action game FPS doesn't matter bring back the, it's a me, Mario. Thank you for playing. Goodbye. Do you remember that screen? How many of you guys remember going to GameStop or going to Blockbuster and sitting and playing one of the consoles they had set up, and after you played for like five or ten minutes, the game would turn off and you'd get that screen with Mario telling you to get the fuck out of the line. Like, that thing has to come back for all these events. And you could kind of include this into uh, things I didn't like about PAX, because that type of screen, that like Mario get out of line screen, should be on all these machines at PAX. It really should be. 
But regardless of that, I highly suggest you keep an eye on Wildstar and sign up for that beta. If you're into MMOs, it's very action-oriented. No more of this just like stand still and auto-attack people. No, that that's, that's not the combat of this game. It's a lot more fluid, a lot more skill shots. It seems like a lot more fun than really anything on the market right now. So keep an eye on it. Go sign up for the beta. Because it's hard to friggin' get into that beta, and you want to be on that list early, so when they include a lot of people, you'll be on it. Other than Wildstar, though, I'd probably tell you to keep your eye on Titanfall. You've probably heard plenty of people talk about this game already, but I was so misinformed about this game, it's not even funny. First of all, I thought it was only on Xbox One. Eh, that's wrong, it's on PC as well. Second of all, I thought it was a single-player game with, like, a multiplayer afterthought. Eh, that's also wrong. It's multiplayer only. Kind of like a Team Fortress 2, where the whole game from the ground up is only for multiplayer. It's cool, it's crazy, it's mech suits, it's, it's a lot different than what you're used to. This is not like... Call of Duty 7, Black Ops Ghosts vs. the Ghosts and uh, 2 Train Warfare. No, this is completely different. And I can't wait for more information about this game. I wish I got a chance to play it, but I didn't. And I'm very, very unfortunately mad that I did not get a chance to sit in line and wait for the... And I didn't get to do it. But what is cool about that game is... Yay! Okay, what? what? Okay, let's move on. So, we're going to talk about one more thing. Well, actually, two more things uh, that I thought were really interesting at PAX. And they're both indie games. If you're into indie games, then put the cone up to your ear and like an old person back in like the 1800s and listen to this. So, Octodad 2, well, not really Octodad 2, but Octodad Deadliest Catch looks like a great game. It's got a brand new revamped graphics engine, got a bunch of new things to do as the Octopus Father. And I played almost that whole game on this channel, so when that game actually releases... I'm going to be playing a lot of it, so keep your eye on that one. Also, for indie stuff, Wasteland Kings. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of this, but it's by the Vlambeer guys. I did a couple of Vlambeer games on this channel. I did Radical Fish, well, Ridiculous Fishing, uh, and Super Crate Box. It's the same guys. It's this crazy, like, top down roguelike shooter where you have, like, a ton of different weapons and upgrades. It looks, that's actually a prototype. I'm going to put in the description a link to the prototype of the game. It's free. And you can check it out for yourself and see what you think about that. But other than that, I kind of want to wrap this video up. I don't want it to get too long. Uh, I do want to say a very, very heartfelt thank you for 150,000 subscribers, guys. And I'm very tired. You can probably already tell this right now. I'm living on caffeine this last couple of days. So I'm probably going to go back and lie down after recording this video. But stay tuned for more stuff. I got like a frog in my throat right now, but I'm not going to uh, redo this video. So I'm going to get progressively worse. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. And of course, take care, everybody. <coughs>